this video is just to talk you through the way that I play the tune Iron Horse. I'll give you a few pointers along the way um, as to some of the embellishments that are added to the tune. The first thing I'll do though is play the basic melody for anyone who is wishing to learn the tune and play it by ear rather than looking at the musical notation. For anyone who's familiar with musical notation there is a link in the notes below this video for you to be able to go and get hold of a copy and um, either, well, maybe not print it out but store it on, on a computer or something like that. So anyway, this, this is the bare bones of the, of the tune. an alternative melody played on the lower strings something to this tune to make it sound more old-timey I use a lot of drone notes so when I'm playing the melody on the E string I'm actually simultaneously playing the open A so I'm using the A string as a drone and then when I drop down the melody drops down onto the A string I use the D string as a, uh, the open D as a drone. So like this. And then when I go down to the um, melody on the D string. actually drone the A string. So you just transfer the drone from either the A or the D. So basically you're just playing the two, middle two strings but you're playing the melody on both strings and you're droning the other string. It gives the tune more volume, it makes it sound I think it gives it that old time sound, to be honest. So from the top, the only other thing I put in there is a small slide. that part where, where and all the slide is is really going f with my f f uh, first finger on the first note of the A string I just slide up from the natural note below or from the flattened note I should say and 
and there's an opportunity to put a slide in at the very beginning if you wish. So it's your choice there. It just adds a little bit more colour to the tune. The next part of the tune Okay, we need to look at that one. That has a double stop to begin with. So the double stop is where you hold your ring finger down on the third note of the D string. That one. And you hold your first finger down on the first note of the A string. That one. And it gives you this nice double stop. So that's the start, that's the beginning of this um, C section of the tune. And then when you get to that third note on the A string, I personally like to slide my ring finger, which is holding, holding down that third note, up to the open E. So I'm actually playing two E's simultaneously. I'm playing an E on the A string and I'm also playing an open E on the, on the E string. So that whole section sounds like this. If that's difficult, particularly that first double stop, that might be an awkward one. There's a nice easy workaround and all you do is instead of playing your ring finger on the D string, on the third note of the D string, you just play the open D. And instead of bringing the, um, the ring finger up to the open E, just play the open E and the open A together. So the whole lot, if you're using the workaround, it sounds like this. Still sounds pretty good. So that's a nice workaround if you find that double stop a little tricky or that sort of double E. A little bit too tricky just 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 use the workaround until you feel comfortable and just pr keep practicing those and then when you start to feel more comfortable with them use them occasionally and see how you get on but there we are that's the uh, third section of the tune there's loads of droning going on there I'm droning all the time. I'm droning either the open D, the open A or the open E. Now there's a fourth part to this tune and it's basically just a lower part playing down on the D and the G string. Um, you start off funnily enough on the A string do there is drone the A and D together and then when you drop down to the G string you drone the D string just gives a nice sound particularly when you go down the bottom of the uh, fiddle on the G string 
particularly if you've got a nice deep sounding violin, it really can, can sound nice. Um, so th that's basically the whole of the tune. thing worth looking out for is that bowing of course it's always about the bowing and I think old time music is really about the bowing it's a, um, I think the best way I could describe it is a syncopation really it's that rhythm going through the tune that you impart um, from your bowing it's not just a, all about playing the notes in fact that's the least of it really it's it's more or less the bowing it's it's getting that pulse and it's kind of fitting your bowing in around that i'd love to be able to say you can just play shuffle bowing notes all the way through but unfortunately you can't you have to sort of there's a long bow there you see and another one there there's short bows and long bows in this so it's tricky in that respect the only thing I can suggest is that you tap your foot um, really um, to keep the timing going. Um, don't play it too quickly at first if you want to go slowly. Also, hold those end bows, like, uh, what I mean is this. Don't be too quick to get off that note and go on to the next one. Just hold it, hold it. I think old time fiddling is all about having a really relaxed style, um, playing the tune without worrying too much, just keeping the rhythm going through. It's almost, as I said before, it doesn't really matter what the notes are. rhythm going and um, and I think it's that's that's relaxed sound I think sometimes with old time fiddle obviously not all old time fiddle is relaxed some of it can be incredibly lively but some tunes are beautifully um, um, put together that the, the bowing the combination of the bowing the melody and the sort of sound of the tune gives it that lovely laid-back feel and then when you get the other instruments added in, like the banjo, the guitar, etc. It's just a, a fantastic sound. So there we are, that's the tune Iron Horse. I think I've covered most of the things that um, I try to add to this tune um, in, in the way that I play it. And obviously you'll have your own approach 
and um, tackle it in your own way. But hopefully, um, by giving you some pointers, it, it gives you a starting point and then you can take it further. Um, I've created a backing track as well. I've had a lot of people asking for um, tutorials like this and backing tracks and I'm doing my very level best to try and um, create those and record them etc. So the after, immediately after this video, the next video along will be the backing track and, and I'll try and get the musical notation and just show, highlight which part of the tune is being played when so that it gives you a pretty good guide as to whereabouts you, you should be in the tune. Um, I also try and always include tab as well because I do appreciate that not everybody reads musical notation so that, that's fine. So tab is always available as well and there's, there's always a link, I think I may have mentioned this, there's always a link in the notes below that, uh, where you can find this, this, um, this musical notation. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been of use to you again and see you again very soon. Bye bye now. I ought to play a tune. No, I think I'll kick it in to touch.